Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 21. In this tutorial we're going to focus on getting our character to aim his weapon. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the very idea of having our character aim his weapon is simplistic. I mean, all we need to do is really just hold the right mouse button and he'll aim. But there's a lot more to it than that because the functionality of other things in scripts have to be stopped before they can carry on. So during all of this, we're going to create a new script which allows us to aim, but we're also going to have to interact with our original tank control script to basically make sure it doesn't glitch out. But I'll demonstrate all the problems as we go along and we'll get the fix in place. So firstly, let's create the script that we're going to use uh, for the weapon. So we'll call it uh, weapon mechanics. So in our character section in our scripts folder, let's right click, create C sharp script and weapon mechanics. <clears throat> and let's open that up in Visual Studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a very simplistic script just by holding the right mouse button we're going to aim. But in doing all of this, we actually need to create another animation. But for now, let's just place two variables in our script. We're going to have one for aiming, checking whether we are or not. And we're also going to have another one for the player, at which point we'll switch back to Unity and get our animation in place. So public bool is aiming and by default it will be false. Second one is the player. So public game object the player semicolon. So like I say we'll head back into Unity and now we need to get an animation in place for our soldier. So let's head to where all our animations are and you'll see obviously we've dealt with all these animations before and we know if we click that little button next to it we open up all those animations and I can't remember if I've mentioned at any point in this series why we use these animations and not the ones in Legacy. The Legacy animations relate to the animation component and we're using the animator component. The animation component is old and it's kind of past it now so we don't really use that. That's you know way past its prime I guess. Uh, so we use the animator which are what these animations are for. So because we have a pistol, we're going to be using the animations specifically for a pistol. And obviously, if you've got a shotgun, you can make your own, uh, a sniper rifle, whatever. And obviously, we'll add more weapons in as we go along. Uh, so for now, I am using the Fire One pistol. And if we open it up, we can see there are two animations. There is one for aiming and one for firing. We're just doing the aiming for now. So let's take that animation, hold control, press D to extract it out of there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly rename it and take away the space between aiming and one. I like to kind of keep everything without spaces. Um, it's just the way I do things. If you want space, that's fine, uh, but it's the way I'm going to do it. Next, we need to attach this animation to our player. So let's go to our soldier here in the hierarchy and let's go to his controller. So let's double click this here and it will open up the animator. And we can see these are the ones we've already got in there. We did these a long time ago, uh, but we just need to drag and drop this aiming one pistol into here. And there we go, that's in place. Uh, it is labeled as looping just for now, but we'll leave the animation itself and process it as we go along, just to make sure if we need to untick or not. So next thing we need to do is create the script that allows us to aim our weapon when we hold down the right mouse button. So let's get rid of void start and the annotations because we do not need them. <clears throat> and we're going to have an if statement. This if statement is going to be if we are holding down the correct mouse button, in this case, the right one. So if input dot get mouse button down and in brackets, the number one close bracket, close bracket, open curly bracket. Why the number one? Well, two mouse buttons, left is zero, right is one. So if you wanted to have the left mouse button as the one to aim, you'd have the number right here as zero and not one. So because we've got it as one, that means the right mouse button. So at this point, we're gonna say is aiming 
equals true. And now we need to be able to play the animation for our character to aim his weapon. So the player dot get component in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of that aiming animation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into Unity and I'm going to go to rename the animation but I'm just going to copy its name instead and I'm going to paste it into the script. The reason I do this is because it eliminates any possibility of typos, meaning you don't type the wrong animation or misname it or something like that. Um, close the quote, close the bracket and semicolon and save. Now logically you would think that this would work, <clears throat> but it won't. So if we go into Unity, let it compile, and if we go to our menu control, which I'm actually going to rename now to area control, because there are many things on here which don't really relate to a menu now. So I think it's best to rename it. Uh, character, and then let's drag and drop that weapons mechanic script onto area control. And you can see here, we just need to apply the player, which is the soldier. And I'm gonna save the scene and press play. So everything is all good and well. However, if we try aiming now, it doesn't work. You can see you get a bit of a glitch going on. So there are, is a reason why this doesn't work. There are things we need to do, like I said, in the uh, after the introduction of this tutorial, we need other scripts to interact here uh, because we need to basically set the tank controls as being off. So that's the reason that glitch is happening. The main aiming script is trying to aim whilst the tank controls are still trying to move the character. So in order to resolve this, we need to change is aiming to a static variable. We then need to save it and head into the tank control script. So this is our script that controls us moving back and forth, turning, all that kind of stuff. And the first thing we need to put in the update now is if, and in brackets, uh, weapon mechanics dot is aiming equals false. And then open curly bracket and delete the close curly bracket. Scroll to the bottom, hit return and close curly bracket there. So all of the uh, tank controls are now contained inside one if statement that says if we're not aiming, then you can do all this. If we are aiming, then you cannot do all of this. So make sure you save that tank control script. Now, if we head back into Unity and press play after it's compiled, we've at least got the first stage underway. We can now aim our weapon. However, if we let go, nothing happens. If we try moving our character, nothing happens. We're basically frozen in place. So there's more we have to do to this to make sure that we can get all of this working. Now, one thing that I do want to add to this is the ability to turn our character when we're aiming. Obviously, you can do that in Resident Evil, uh, and that's something we're going to add now. But it's only something that this script can do if the tank controls are disabled. That means that when is aiming is equal to true, the tank controls are indeed disabled. So if we go to our update method and we have if and in brackets is aiming equals true, then we can do the following. So that means that we now have the ability to add in the horizontal movement that we had in tank controls. You remember down here when we had if uh, the button is horizontal and then we can change the horizontal rotation here. Well, we just need to place that similar script into here. That means we have to add public float and horizontal move, semicolon. And down here, we need to say if, and in brackets, input dot get button and in brackets and quotes horizontal and then close bracket close bracket open curly bracket 
And that now means that we can copy these two lines at the bottom from tank controls. So the horizontal move and the player transform rotate. We can copy both of those lines and place them inside this if statement and save. So basically what's happening here is instead of the controls being done by the tank controls, it's now being done by the weapon mechanics, but only when is aiming is equal to true. So if we head back to Unity, let it compile and press play, we should be able to move. No problem. However, if we aim, we can still rotate our character. Now, the reason I want to keep it like this is very reminiscent of how the old Resident Evils looked. Now, there's one more thing we're going to have to do, because if we let go of our mouse button, we are stuck in the position. So, we need to do the inverse of aiming here. So, where we've got if input.getMouseButton down, we need to say if input.get mouse button up and one again because it is the right one in the curly brackets we say is aiming equals false and semicolon and save now the reason we don't say uh, to change the animation here is because the instant we change the is aiming to false, the tank control script will immediately take over. So let's press play. And we should be able to see, still all working, all good. So if we aim, we can still turn. And if we let go, we're back to normal. Now, don't worry too much about how janky the animations may look. Uh, it's something we're going to deal with a little later on the series when we blend animations to make them a little bit more relevant to each other, make them kind of blend together using a blend tree. Um, so what I'm thinking now is the next stage in all of this is to actually have our weapon fire. So we want our weapon to fire uh, only when we have the aiming occurring. So next tutorial, we're going to add in another animation. We're going to bring in a weapon sound effect. And we're also going to have our weapon fire only when we're aiming and pressing the left mouse button. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.